If you're concerned about a disease issue on your farm, you're probably thinking, well, I'll just go in and spray a fungicide. That's great if you have a fungal disease. The problem is we're seeing more and more bacterial diseases in crops like corn and soybeans, and for that matter, even wheat and other crops. So the whole trick here is which type of disease do you have and can you control it or not with a fungicide? Well, there are more things out there than just fungal diseases, Brandon. You hit one right on the head with bacterial disease. There's also viruses that are transmitted by bugs, uh, like bean pod model virus, for example, that, yeah, you can spray a fungicide. It's not going to do you any good because it's a virus. So it's just like when you've got a cold and you go to the doctor and he says, yep, you're just going to have to tough it out. There's no remedy for what you've got. Sometimes that's what happens out in the field when we have bacterial diseases. All right, so where I want to start is this. Let's just think about how do we have the most healthy crop possible before we ever even have to think about getting disease infection or spraying a fungicide or anything like that. What it really comes back to is we have to start with good drainage in the field, we have to start with a good seed treatment, and then we want to be looking at what's the overall fertility program. A lot of times, just like in human health, we find that with plant health, the plant's short on one or two or maybe three nutrients. Okay, so just like in humans, we can correct this by taking our vitamins or eating a more balanced diet. You can feed your plant a more balanced diet, but that starts with you got to do soil tests and you got to look at different areas of the field separately. You can't pull one test for an 80 acre field or a quarter section. That's absolutely not going to cut it. You've got to find out in each area of the field, how am I doing for fertility? And make sure you're not just addressing N, P, and K. You're also taking a look at the secondary nutrients like sulfur and the micronutrients like zinc and boron and copper. You know, the other thing is fungicide applications too, Brian. A lot of times farmers will use a fungicide well in advance of when they think they're going to have a disease. Like in corn, maybe we're in the V4 to V7 time frame, putting a fungicide out there and you say, I don't see any disease. I normally don't have any till after tassel, but for some reason I had less problems later in the season with fungal or bacterial disease. Part of that comes back to plant health, just like you were talking about getting those nutrients balanced. If we can do everything to keep that plant healthy all through the season, it's only going to be a positive for us in the long run. All right, here's the problem that I've got when we start talking about virus, fungal disease, bacterial disease. Even as an agronomist for 30 years, I can't always tell if it's bacterial or it's fungal especially. Those are the two that I, I find most tricky. So if you are in that same position and you say, boy, I'm not 100% sure what I've got here. Yes, it's great to get a good trained agronomist out there, but what I often do is I just send samples in and have them analyzed. Send them to a plant pathology lab and have them tested and they'll tell you what you have. Now here's the problem with that. By the time you've identified the disease or you know you have a disease problem and you get it sent in, then they tell you, hey, it's this disease, it's fungal, it's bacteria, whatever. Well, by that point, you've already lost a lot of yield but it's still important to know what the, the issue is. So what I would do in that case, and a lot of times, here's the, the situation I'm in, I say, well, pretty sure that a fungicide is going to help. If nothing else, it's at least going to give me some plant health benefits. So I'm going to go ahead and spray the fungicide while I'm waiting, but it's going to take a week to get the actual results back from the plant pathology lab. I'll just confirm that. Hopefully it comes out like I thought, otherwise I may have kind of wasted my money. But nevertheless, I'm just going to pull the trigger right now because I know the faster I respond, the more yield I'm going to gain. Like so many problems that we see in our fields, if you're out ahead of that problem, you can greatly reduce it even when it seems like it's imminent. So for example, with bacterial diseases, maybe it's bacterial blight in soybeans, maybe it's bacterial leaf streak or xanthomonas in corn or Goss's wilt in corn, you can plant tolerant varieties and tolerant hybrids. Now with newer bacterial diseases like, for example, Xanthomonas, we may not have great ratings on all the hybrids out there, especially some of the new ones, uh, but your seed dealer may have an idea that, hey, these ones appear to be doing a little bit better from the, the plots that I was in last summer. Uh, at least you've got something to go on because there certainly is a variety and hybrid type of response. The other thing is this summer, as you notice those things pop up, make a note that, oh, wow, that 2.4 maturity bean really seemed to have a lot more bacterial blight than another one. Uh, and it could be a variety response. The other thing that you could have is you could have a spot where you had some hail or some kind of stress. Maybe it was wind damage or sand blowing through a field, putting a bunch of cuts into the plant. 
many of the bacterial diseases get in through a wound on the plant. So if you've got that situation, you know you've got more likelihood of a problem as well. Now you might ask, hey, there are fungicides to take care of fungal problems. How about bactericides to take care of bacteria issues? Well, there are some bactericides. A lot of them will contain copper. Copper hydroxide is pretty popular, for example. Well, you think about that, what are we doing with that copper? Is it really having this internal gain in the, in the plant and uh, suppressing the disease that way? Uh, and a lot of times it's just burning stuff really bad and stopping the bacteria that way. So you can actually see some leaf burn out of that sometimes in addition to stopping the bacteria. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of good bactericides that, that we look at to stop things like Goss's wilt or bacterial leaf streak. So normally we're just talking about pick the right variety. If you've got a bacterial disease, not a whole lot you can do. You might want to try some of these other things, the bactericides, uh, but it's probably not going to work well. And on the fungicide end of things, as we always say, make sure you're spraying before you see a lot of disease issues. Once you see a lot of disease, you've already lost a lot of your yield. You definitely have to be out in your fields often, taking a look at plants and making some observations to see if disease of some sort, bacterial or fungal, could be in your fields. The other thing you're watching for is our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed?